Hi, I'm Jim Heath, a.k.a. The Reverend Horton Heat. I'm going to show you some of the gear that I use on stage. Well, uh, this is a, the, Jonathan plays this one on one song, but this is a baritone guitar. It's just, uh, uh, it's a cheapy Gretsch baritone guitar, but it sounds great. It works. I, I, I do use that a little in the studio, so add a little baritone guitar on stuff, but live I don't use it. Jonathan plays it on one song. But this is my uh, main guitar that I use live, and it's a Gretsch, what is what does it say in there? RHH 6120? OG 6120RHH, that's right. For Rev it's my own model of Gretsch, Reverend Horton V. And um, I've got I've got four of these. This is the one that I kinda like I'm more used to and kinda like it better, but 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 uh uh this guitar has uh ten ten through 46 or something like that uh, strings but they're round wound strings but I also in the studio and the my guitar that's out on the bus the guitar I practice on it's just like this but it has flat wound strings and uh, but uh, but what I use live are Dunlop tens and uh, sometimes I'll use that other one but uh but yeah, and uh, so about the only uh, thing that's different than this, well, there's a few things, I guess, that are different than stock. You know, it's got a different pit guard. It's obviously the custom pit guard. I put a roller bridge on it, and if you look closely, these are little rollers, so it helps, it helps kind of, um, when I use the Bigsby, they really roll through, and it help, help, gives it a little edge keeping it in tune. But in all honesty, those roller bridges are they're they're really sensitive. If I really dig in, I can dig in more on my other guitar that has flat wound strings. On this one I have to be a little bit careful with it or I'll pop these things out as I'm playing the gig. But the roller bridge, if anything that helps keep me in tune, then I'm gonna you know, I can make sure I'm a little bit light. I'm not, I don't I'm always right on the edge of knocking the thing out because I still play pretty hard. But uh, I, I tuned a standard uh, A A440, so it's the low E strings and E proper E, and the high E strings a proper E. So um, on one song when we do Ace of Spades, you know, Motorhead and a lot of those bands they tune to E flat. So or you know so uh, instead of yeah, so anyway, for that one, I have a weird way to, since, since it's, instead of tuning my guitar to E flat, I tune the low E string to E flat. And then it's kind of an odd way to play, you know, all your chords go out the window, you know, you have to, I have to play my chords a little different. But it's, it gets me into E flat with the, having that, that good low E flat sound. The low E string is now E flat, and that is kind of, you got, you know, it's cool. So it's kind of like drop D, except it's drop E flat. But Well, the tone knobs, these usually stay all the way up. I hardly ever, I never move them. The only reason I touch them is to make sure they're all, all the way up. Then I use this volume tone knob a lot to help me, well, a lot. It just kind of depends on the song. It really helps having it right there for soft songs. Uh, these two switches, it, this switch is a, um, it's it's kind of like a, uh, uh, kind of a, a little bit like a low pass filter resistor. It, it, it'll cut out some of the highs. It's a high cut. And, and, I usually don't use that. There's I use maybe on one song that we're doing now. Will I move that? It's so it's this way is one is a one degree a cut. And this way cuts even more. So, but I don't use that much. This is this is my pickup selector, and normally I use this neck pickup. I will switch to this one for a little bit more 
of the maybe stuff that gets me into heavy metal land or something. But this is my this is my normal pick pickup. I mean, well, you know, I've been meaning to. I'm so lazy. I've been meaning to get out my uh, my volt ohm meter and checking to see how hot these pickups are. They're no, but they're they're just like stock that were on the guitar. They're TV Jones original. Was, I guess that's what they call them. TV Jones original filter trons. But that's like the stock on these guitars. But I will say this: that every pickup sounds different, no matter how good they are. You can't get them all exactly right, you know. And so this one, this the pickups on this one have a certain special little deal that my other guitars that are just like this don't really sound. They they're not all the same. So it's it's. But I might be picky. I don't know. All right. Well, um, both of these are a Gretsch Executive amplifier. And uh, they were they were uh, made by uh, uh, Victoria Amplifiers, which is here in Chicago, actually. So, but uh, he made them for Gretsch for a while, and they don't make them anymore. And uh, I was I was I'm kind of locked into my amp. I had it. I had a Fender a particular Fender Super Reverb that was my main amp for a long time, and. I guess Joe from Gretsch brought one of these out to some festival that we were at, and I played through it, and I thought, man, that's, that's pretty good. You know, so there, I, I could play into a lot of amps where I go, wow, that's pretty good, but I can't use it live because I have to have my particular thing. I have to have, it's like, it's kind of hard to explain, but I, I almost need my amp as much as I need my guitar on a gig. So. It's challenging now because we fly out to a lot of gigs where I have to rent an amplifier or use what they have, and that's just really hard. But anyway, get back to the thing. These are Gretsch Executive amplifiers, and uh, they've got one 15-inch speaker and I think two six V6 power tubes, rated at 20 watts. But Brian, the guy of Victory that made these amps, he said, you know, they they might be just really only like a 17 watt amp. So, but it's very, very efficient, 17 watts. So it can be very loud. And I turn it, I turn it up to 10. I like a lower. I get my tone more out of the sound of a turned up amplifier than I do out of any kind of like distortion or overdrive pedals like a lot of guys use it's this and I turn it up I basically just turn turn it up to 10 and since I use the neck pickup I back down the, the I back down the the bass and and the in the mid range a little bit and maybe adjust it a little bit to, if the room is a little bit bright I might have to bring it up or what have you you know but uh and then lately, I've been back using more of the, the reverb on this, on, on this, and uh, but it's got a beautiful reverb. It's got a beautiful trim low. But I fly out to so many gigs that I, you know, let's see where I got this volume all the way up, treble there, about there, bass back here, mid back here, reverb. I started using the reverb again a little bit. I don't use these. I started using the the trim low on a pedal board and the reverb on a pedal board more lately even though it doesn't sound as good as this but I I fly out to so many gigs that I have it I have I you know I never know what kind of reverb I'm gonna get or whatever but uh, anyway oh but because it's so efficient because they're so loud I carry a baffle everywhere we go and so I'll have this up here against like this. Like I might start with it. This is the only amp that's on. I don't play through both of them at once. I just play through one. This is just a backup. So I'll start off like that and I'll be up here playing. And if all of a sudden I can't hear myself quite well enough, then instead of stopping and coming back here and turning the amp up, I just kick this thing with my foot. And it's all of a sudden, there I am. I'm ready, I'm good to go. See what I'm saying? And on and certain stages are, you know, throw the sound so much that 
if this thing's hitting the back of my, back of my legs, it's kind of nice, you know. But if it's a big stage and this thing is further back and it's blowing at my ear, sometimes I'll, on bigger stages I'll have the baffle on it more than on a smaller stage. So it's kind of an odd deal, but uh, but I really like it a lot because it soaks up a lot of the volume. And then, and plus, if if I turn myself up simply by moving this then I'm not making an adjustment on the amp, so it's not going through the PA any different. See what I'm saying? So that way it's not a... Anyway. Okay, the microphone is a Sure super, super 55. It's got, so it's got a hypercardioid capsule, capsule, so where it's very directional, so that it helps eliminate feedback. And uh, I like it a lot. I'm used to it. I've been using them for years. And I actually am pretty good at refurbishing. I refurbish those mics. So I'll get the I'll get the different model, just the SH55, and I'll put the hyp the hypercardioid car capsule in it and refurbish it, maybe put in new the new, you know, pop filter, the foam and stuff like that. And from the guitar, I go into this volume pedal, which serves uh the, the, the cool purpose of this pedal is the is the steel guitar type licks. All steel guitar players have a volume pedal, and they do swells, and so I kind of will mimic a steel guitar player with that. And sometimes I'll move my foot real fast like that and mimic a tremolo, you know, so that way I can get a tremolo and, and, and change the, and match it to the speed or whatever without hitting a button or making the amp do the tremolo. But so anyway, that's that serves the, the, the utilitarian purpose is that I can back it off and then and, and my tuner, I can still I can tune without having to press the tuner on and off. So the tuner is not in my chain. It's, just, it's coming out of a, a, an auxiliary out of here to the tuner. So I tune the, turn this volume pedal off so nobody can hear me, but it's still I can still tune. So anyway, there you go. I'd go into that. That goes over here into uh, the uh, the elevator, and which is I've only started using this year. Is when I first started using, or within the last years, I've started using a boost pedal for the first time in my career. So I I use I used to I used to have like a backup amp where I would bring that. I'd bring a blues driver, maybe have it on all night if I needed a little more. I don't do any of that anymore. I just have one amp with one sound. Two amps at once, I think, is not really that good because the sound man doesn't know which sound to use. You know, so what I want to do is I want to give the sound man one good sound and that's it. Otherwise, you know, if I have one amp clean, one amp dirty, which he ends up, you know, it's, you know, see what I'm saying? You could use the wrong sound. But I started using this, and I, I I'm still kind of, you know, I, 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 I like having the volume boost, but I don't really like it getting me more of a, it gets me more into metal land, and I kind of fight that a little bit, but it's, it's good to have a boost. I'm, I'm enjoying using it, so it's something different, but I'm, you know, try, still trying to get used to, you know, I've had it for a year, but. But it's, that's a really good unit, and radial, radial products are the, the best. They're built like a tank. I have a bunch of radial gear in my studio, recording type, you know, analog gear. So anyway, it goes from the elevator, and this, this is bypass. It, then it goes over here to this Strymon El Capistan. So all us rockabilly guys have to have a delay. And so, I don't know if I need a $300 delay, but it's nice. It's a good one. I like it a lot. And then, plus the Strymon, this Strymon has a, you can, it has a little bit of this reverb in it. That it, it, it so, it, it, it's an overall nice thing. I really like this. But it's, you know, that one slap back repeat. Rockabilly guys, we like to mimic the Ampex tape recorder sound. Sam Phillips and others made popular, which is a slap back at about 160 milliseconds, I think. 
So I don't know what, I, I can't tell what milliseconds it is. I just have it set so where it sounds kind of good to me. But it's just one slap, you know, pop, pop. And uh, so that's that. A lot of, you know, and the, uh, another thing about delays is that a lot of, a lot of companies, and see, this has built in, this that I don't really have it down, the tape age, wow and flutter, that was up a little bit. Repeats is just one repeat. So, but the, the, these kind of things will add that kind of uh, tape warble effect, like an echoplex. But the sound I'm going for is that 50s slapback tape sound. And those Ampex machines did not warble very much. They were very high tech for their aid, for their years. So uh, uh, for me, a rockabilly guy, a uh, 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 tape, tape delay, and I have a couple of them, real nice ones, Echoplexes, but it, they're not high, super high quality recording units, and they add kind of a warble chorus thing that really wasn't there the way that in the 50s they used a nice big old Ampex machine that didn't really have that much warbling chorusy type stuff. So. I li anyway, so I like the digital delay. It gets me in more in the ballpark than a tape delay for, a, or, or like an echo plex or something. Then this, I just got this because um, I like Stry I like this thing. This is Strymon, right? And I got this new Strymon that does tremolo and echo. So that's really what I would get out of my amplifier. A good Fender amplifier. These amplifiers have good. Fender amp amps have great reverb and great tremolo, and that's a that's the type of effect that I use is tremolo, reverb, and then the delay. But uh, but this this one is I'm, I'm still I still like my spring reverb. So anyway, then I go through this because this I don't use. That's kind of an emergency thing that I really don't know how to use it, except that it, 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 I have that when I fly out. So I can take this rig with me and fly out, and that the, the tone workstation, I don't even really use it, but if I fly out and the amp they give me is just completely dry, or completely clean and brittle, then I can maybe add a little bit of dirt with this thing, you know, to kind of get me in the ballpark, but it's, it's not the right kind of dirt. It's not like, I'm so used to my amps. Like if I, if the band ever gets, gets big, those babies are going to fly with me everywhere I go, or not both of them, but maybe one of them for sure, because I, I hate to go without using my amp, you know. That's my secret weapon. Lance Lipinski turned me on to that. Well, I always wanted one, but that's a, that's a delay pedal. That I plugged the mic into that, which that kind of gives me, leads me to another whole thing about what I do with the vocal. But I, I kind of forgot. But so the vocal mic goes into that, directly into that, and it's a delay pedal. So I can I can do a wild delay effect on my voice, and then turn it off when I talk, or, or well, or I have, I only use it on, I I don't use it on every song, you know. So if it's a wild rockabilly song, I might use that. Then if it's more of a ballad, where the words need to be more understood, and there, then I, I'll turn it off, and then I turn it off to talk. So, and, that, and that's basically doing what I was talking about earlier, the Ampex slap back, one, 60, one, one, one slap at 160 milliseconds is about what that does. So, it, but another thing that I do is that it goes from there all the way back around into a splitter, a mic splitter by Radial. Radial makes a mic splitter. And I'll come show you that up here. The mic splitter is behind here. See, it goes into this thing. That's and what that does is that splits the signal. One signal goes to the PA, so they have their line. Then the other signal out of the splitter goes up into an in-ear. I have a wireless. 
a Washure wireless system goes to this little mixer and then to this in-ear. And so the way I use an in-ear is it's not connected to the PA at all. It's just here. It's just my own. And all it, so all it can be is my voice because it's my, that mic. That's all, but that's all I need for the in-ear. And I only use one. I don't use it in this ear, but I have a, an in-ear monitor that I'll put in here, and I use the Christmas trees, so it's is what they call them. They're, it's kind of like an earplug, like having an earplug that I can dial in however much of my voice that I need for that particular night. And usually I just leave it set the same every from night to night, so that level of consistency. And and this that little rig right there, that, that really saved my career because you know, Roger Daltrey from The Who, he said he went a whole career with never hearing himself sing live. Because it's it just, these front monitors, it's just, it, they just can never be as clear as you. But having this, I can hear myself so clearly. It's helped my singing, helped me pre preserve my voice, helped me be on, be in better pitch when I sing live. And so it's a, it's, it's changed my life. It's. That's good. And I, I want to plug my new record, Whole New Life. And uh, it, it, it's a really good record. <laughs> but uh, yeah, actually, the, the, this new album, well, it's hard for bands has been around as long as we have to, to, to get our new songs into the set because we've had so many other songs in the past years. That's what people want to hear. I want to give the people what they want to hear. So it's hard, but this new album, the songs are fitting in. We're using more new songs off of any new album than we have for a long time. So uh, I've got a real good feeling about this album, and it's great that we have a bunch of great new songs that are working in our live set. So <laughs> whole new life, check it out.